video, I think. Let's make sure. Yeah, okay. Video. Um, anyway, lovely day again. Mostly. It's really getting quite better. Um, you know, still some daffodils left, which is really late for them. May and such. Um, anyway, so I thought today would be, uh, the addiction, the related term would be the, um, parasitism or cannibalism in the other vernacular. I think I'm going to go with crap. I like crap. Consumption, reproduction, <laughs> addiction, parasitism. Yeah. I know it doesn't uh, sing, but uh, really shouldn't have to. <laughs> the truth shouldn't have to sing and dance. There, you can quote me. Uh, anyway, almost apple blossoms here. They're also very late. But anyway, um, uh, what else? No, oh, sure, parasitism, yeah. So, yeah, obviously it's in all these, the obvious ways, you know, food. That's mm, obviously stealing, you know, from the other organisms. Um, yeah, I'd argue that there's a, a less and more egregious way to do that stealing. I mean, stealing from the unsentient is better than stealing from the sentient kind of thing. I think, obviously. So, but then there, where's the rest of this parasitism? What well, exists in all, first you have to figure the whole biosphere exists for, exists as a necessary um, condition of your existence. Uh, there's no you without it. And there's no you without, uh, you know, the fertilizing of the soil. <laughs> you know, through the decomposition of the organisms. Um, it may be possible, maybe, uh, to, you know, reduce the amount of sentient life and still retain a, a habitable biosphere, but hard to say. I mean, that was a long time ago in Earth's history when the first little animals crawled out of the ocean uh, to exploit the... to parasite. <laughs> yeah, the plants. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so your existence costs a lot. It's very expensive in terms of what you're feeding on, so to speak. I mean, to glorify or defend the existence of human beings, you have to defend a whole natural bloodbath full of uh, great tragedy. Some, they're all very sad stories. They all end in in some sort of choking horror, <laughs> you know, and uh, blood and such, and nasty, nasty, nasty. Anyway, so that's a given. I mean, that's the game. I mean, if you're going to defend the game, you got to sort of defend this price paid for your existence of all the sentient organisms redundantly living rather mechanical lives. Um, you know, just doing the same feeding over and over and over and over and over. Uh, reliving the same fear, the same terror, the same pain. Yes, they have their joys, uh, but we know they're mostly made out of those tranquil moments when something isn't chasing you or harassing you and the flies aren't pestering you. And all of that, all the other parasites leave you alone for a while uh, and let you do some reproduction <laughs> for which you will be rewarded. Uh, the feeding is pleasurable, uh, but again, we know that's not free. So the uh, thing I really wanted to get to, though, I mean, that, those are the crude arguments, and I think they're the strong arguments. I think they're, um, you know, they can't be... There's no defense. There's no... I'm sorry, I had to carry stuff. It's annoying. I mean, there's no way to defend the... I don't think. Um, you know, the volume numbers. The... Yeah, the, the, the mass of it. Anyway, uh, but the more interesting part... Uh, interesting. Um, the more personal to humans in there perspective and their self-glorifying perspective 
is the parasitism we do to each other. Now, see, so yeah, I've got the obvious one of the economic system, you know, where we reward people for falling out of vaginas and we punish people for falling out of the wrong vagina. You know, give huge head starts, huge liabilities, disabilities, all kinds of unfairnesses. Um, and we take full advantage of those unfairnesses. Too many people uh, will bid them down for their wages, to force them to cut each other's throat effectively, to scab each other out of a living wage. Um, you know, parasitism. Uh, then there's all this, just the basic relationships people have with each other. Um, you know, they're often our friendships. Admittedly, I'm, I fall into this category. Um, there's a usury to it. You know, there's, you're friends with people who have utility. Uh, you know, maybe they'll give you a blowjob or, uh, you know, maybe they have some connections that might be valuable for you to uh, keep, uh, you know, to, to, to be able to pursue if opportunity knocks. Uh, sometimes it's just an ego thing where it's just somebody you find is, uh, you know, you're, you need their approval. You need their, uh, you want to impress them. So it's sort of a competition thing. You know, you're almost friends because they, they provoke in you a sense of, uh, you know, I got to show this guy up someday. <laughs> you know, uh, so it's kind of an ironic kind of parasitism. You're just feeding off the competition. Uh, and, uh, you know, the fact that they are uh, interesting for that purpose. Uh, then there's just raw utility, again, where somebody just knows stuff. It's good to know people who know stuff, know how to do stuff. Uh, you know, you can always uh, take advantage of that at the right opportunity. So it's, it's kind of a utility thing. We <coughs> cultivate friendships largely based on utility and tend to neglect those friendships where it just becomes kind of burdensome and depressing and whatnot. I mean, I've certainly made myself less than useful to some people by merely, you know, being honest and, you know, uh, talking my shit, so to speak. And it's just shit people don't want to hear. And that's okay. I don't, I don't have a need to convince them, but I just also don't have any desire to be dishonest and pretend uh, everything's okay. So it's sort of a, a price you pay. But I would argue that most of those people were people who just found me useful for some purpose. And that purpose uh, had diminishing returns, <laughs> you know, in the sense that you had to pay for it uh, with, uh, by having to listen to me. <laughs> and uh, that was too much. Um, so it is kind of a strange business, our psychology and what we feed on and how we feed on each other. Uh, I'm certainly charmed by some people. <laughs> and so I put them in the charming category. And uh, that's a whole psychology. It's not, uh, the, the utility isn't uh, obvious. And then, like I said, there's just some other people I find useful because they know some stuff. I can't say I have too many friendships based on uh, some useful conversation. I guess that's why I don't have too many of those in my personal life. I don't bother, because there's just a certain point where yeah, I don't have too many other stories to tell that I really give a damn about. And, uh, you know, once you know, once you've gone over the, the points, so to speak, there's really nothing else to talk about. You know, the weather, <laughs> you know, or some, <laughs> well, the dirt is a really weird color this year. Yeah, I don't know what's with that dirt. You know, that kind of thing. It must be global warming dirt. Um, yeah, you know, you can do that, but it just doesn't do much for me. So, it is sort of interesting if you just analyze your 
connections to people and why they exist. Uh, you know, and the real motives behind them. And uh, I, I sort of did that early in my youth, and that's where I, <laughs> I kind of realized humans suck. Because uh, I sucked. I mean, I just, you know, I could see how mercenary I was in choosing uh, friendships and, and uh, you know, there was always, even, even when you were sympathetic for somebody, uh, you know, that it just wasn't very durable. You know, sympathy just doesn't last. And even that's kind of a, a dishonesty, you know, that, you know, be somebody's friend out of some kind of pity or something. And, uh, you know, like I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> so I was getting like right thing points because I was befriending somebody who needed a friend. So even that was a kind of mercenary. And the fact that, uh, yeah, I was gaining character points, uh, ironically, <laughs> you know, by, by doing something fundamentally dishonest. Um, but there's no way to, there's no way to not do it and, and have character. So <laughs> even though it's slimy character, it's the only character we got. Uh, it's better than no character. It's better than uh, demonstrating no capacity to understand that other people might need a boost now and then. It might be your job to provide it you know, without any direct payment. So I suppose that's the counter example to most of our relationships are those that we protect and cherish uh, because they have a, a currency in the reward of good deed doing. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm big tires. <laughs> big tires. It's like pedaling a motorcycle. Hello. How you doing? Anyway, uh, where was I? Uh, going down the Everest Lane or something. <laughs> Pro biking. Anyway, uh, so you know, I could analyze why those two guys are friends. You know, they've known each other for years, kind of gotten familiar with each other. <laughs> you know, found uh, utility in each other's company because you need two guys to do some things sometimes. Um, you know, sometimes being alone, you need too much time to think, maybe. Um, yeah, I would score. I was kind of thinking she would be running actually, but eh, next time, I'm way home maybe. <laughs> anyway, uh, it, you know, it, in my youth, I'd say my friendships were more genuine or deeper or something. She really did have a utility for your friends because they were protection against the cruel world, so to speak. Uh, there were a place you could go where uh, you, know, you didn't find the same kind of negative judgments and all that crap. And maybe there still was utility in it, uh, in the company. But I guess that's part of it. It was it's part of the, doing that whole learning thing. And uh, it's hard to do that in isolation. It kind of is good to have a, somebody to do it with because they can give you interpretations and, and reactions that you might not have might not have occurred to you on your own. So in your play, you can do a lot of learning through each other's experience. It sort of maximizes your growth and your maturity. So anyway, but yeah, the overall, uh, the substance of our psychology is mercenary. Uh, the basic noodle of it, <laughs> you know, is a desire and want machine. And it writes itself little narratives, little stories on how it can achieve these, these ambitions. And we often place other people in those stories in kind of a very, you know, kind of a negative, 
utility kind of role, kind of a mercenary. This very, what's in it for me? We're often, what's in it for me when it comes to maintaining connections to people? Um, yeah, and so it's just more example that even in the, the relationships we consider sacred, even those ones founded in love, <laughs> there's really uh, something mercenary going on, that it isn't just for love. And even when it is for love, that itself can be very selfish. It's love of having a trophy, love of having something better than you admire you, uh, more just feeding, more of the machine feeding. Um, and it's just a sad, horrid, <laughs> nasty fact of our existence. But this is the game we're playing. And that isn't so bad, but it's a game to endorse. That's where people go all wrong. Play the game because you're a player. You've been designed to play. So go ahead and play. But don't. <laughs> don't maintain. Don't perpetuate. Don't endorse. Because uh, it comes at too high a price. It just does. Anyway. I've learned to <laughs> not hate that word. I don't know why. I was supposed to get rid of it last year, and I didn't do it. So, I'll try to do better. As I often just make a statement like that, it makes me feel like I'm going to. If I say it, it usually makes you think you're going to do it. So we'll see if it comes to that. Uh, otherwise... Next time and such. Cool, pretty soon. A couple more days. Everything's way behind it. It's usually full of tadpoles, which is really quite horrible. So they all have to get <laughs> annihilated. Um, got something in there. It's like something dead. Or I don't know. Maybe some kind of creature, maybe. I will go look. You can come with me. Let's we'll see what it is. It's probably just rubbish of some kind. Just had the look of a dead thing. Yeah, it's just a, it's a plastic thing of some kind. Oh, hat. Oh, there's some tadpoles in there. Yeah, more than I thought. They're kind of big, too. There are usually a lot more of them, though. That's the good news. A lot less of them. A lot less. Usually swarming with them. A couple of days to take the net off. Dead bulls will be out of luck. Give some of them a bucket. But, yeah. but it's just the story of life on Earth. This zillions and zillions of little creatures every day. Every day. <laughs> Some nice white daffodils. I like those. It's there. I'm not a big fan of yellow. I like the white. So anyway, until next time. Such.